Hey everyone, welcome back to Mashup Math. Anthony here, and welcome to this lesson on how to read bar charts and bar graphs. So we'll start out by saying that a bar chart, which is also referred to as a bar graph, they both mean the same thing, is a diagram that can be used to compare and contrast values in relation to each other. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of how to read bar graphs and what they're used for. So in our first example, we're going to start off with a data chart. And the data that we're looking at is about a survey that was done on students concerning their favorite drinks. And what we're going to do in this first example is create a bar graph to model the data in the chart. So let's start out by giving our bar graph a title, in this case, Favorite Types of Drinks. Next, we have to label our vertical axis using an appropriate scale. And if we look at the data chart, we see that all of the numbers are single digit numbers. So let's go ahead and label our vertical axis from 0 to 10. Next, we need to make space for each type of drink on the horizontal axis. And now we are ready to start constructing those bars on our bar graph or bar chart based on the data in the table. So let's start out with milk. Based on the chart, we can see that only one student chose milk as their favorite type of drink. So all we have to do is construct a bar above the milk symbol that goes from 0 to 1 and stops at 1. So this bar represents the one student who chose milk. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing for soda. Based on the chart, we can see that three students chose soda as their favorite drink. So this time we're going to make a bar above the soda icon that goes from zero up to three, again, because three students chose soda. Our next bar is for water. And based on the chart, we can see that six students chose water as their favorite drink. So in this case, we're going to make a bar that goes from zero to six over the water icon. And again, this bar represents the six students who chose water. Next, we'll do the bar for juice. Based on the chart, we can see that seven students chose juice as their favorite type of drink. So we have to create a bar over the juice icon that goes from zero to seven. And now we just have to construct our final bar for the number of students who chose tea as their favorite drink. Based on the table, we can see that five students chose tea. So all we have to do is construct a bar over the T icon starting at 0 and going up to 5, again because 5 was the number of students who chose T as their favorite drink. And so now we have just constructed a bar graph or bar chart that represents this data. And this first example should just make you more comfortable with understanding how to read and make conclusions from looking at bar graphs or bar charts. So let's go ahead now and look at one more example. So in this second example, we are given a bar graph or bar chart. Again, remember, they just mean the same thing. And we want to be able to read it correctly to fill in the data chart that corresponds with this bar graph. And in this example, the bar graph that we're looking at represents the vegetable sales by pound. And so let's see if we can correctly read the bar graph to find out the right amount for each kind of vegetable. So first, let's notice that the vertical axis for this bar graph goes from 0 to 100. So these are much larger numbers than we were looking at in the first example that only went from 0 to 10. So just keep that in mind. Our numbers are going to be much larger. So now we're ready to fill in our table. And we'll start off with radishes. We can see that the bar for radishes goes all the way up to 50 
So we can conclude that the number of pounds of radishes shipped was 50, and we can put 50 in our chart. So next we can move on to sweet potatoes, and we can see that the bar for sweet potatoes stops at the midpoint between 70 and 80, so we can conclude that the number of pounds of sweet potatoes shipped was 75. Our next vegetable is onions, and we can see that the bar for onions stops at 60, so we can conclude that the number of pounds of onions shipped was 60. Moving on to carrots, which is the highest bar on the graph, we can see that it goes all the way up to 90, and so we can conclude that the number of pounds of carrot shipped was 90. Next, we can look at peppers, and we can see that the bar for peppers goes to the midpoint between 30 and 40, and so we can conclude that the number of pounds of peppers shipped was 35. And now for our last vegetable, cabbage, the shortest bar on the bar graph, we can see that it goes up to 20, and we can conclude that the pounds of cabbage shipped was 20. Okay, so that's it for this quick introductory lesson on how to read bar charts and bar graphs. After completing those two examples, you should be much more comfortable with both creating bar graphs and reading bar graphs. So just keep these lessons in mind moving forward, and I'll see you guys all next time. Thanks. Hi everyone, Anthony here one last time. Hope you found that lesson to be helpful. And if you want to help us out, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. We're committed to adding new video lessons every week, and now would be the time to subscribe, so I really hope that you would consider it. And also, don't miss your chance to download your free practice worksheet that's included with this video lesson. Just click the link in the description below, and you can get your download. Hope to see you all soon. Bye!